Now God is giving us for the first time some information about the fact that we are being changed positionally by being put into Christ. Now I have a really crummy illustration to put on the board for you. And here it is. Here's me, and I'm happy. But what I don't know until I get told is that there is a salvation offered. And that salvation is, I'm just going to put Christ because that's, because here's what happens. When I exercise faith, I, I, actually in my notes, I, I drew a little car. But it is so bad, I refuse to draw it for the tape. But I drew a little car because it's the vehicle. I thought of a car. It's the vehicle by which you are put into Christ. In other words, here I am, and when I put my faith in the finished work of Christ to be sufficient to save me with nothing else added to it, when I do that, I am now put into Christ with all these other members of the body of Christ. You know, I, I, in, in other words, we're changed positionally. We're no longer in Adam, but we're put in Christ. And if you're going to talk about where is salvation found... It is found in Christ because He provided all of that. Well, look, here's the point. that He does, he does this salvation work almost 2,000 years ago. That, that is how God can take a person way out here in the dispensation of grace, thousands of years later, and by virtue of their faith in Him, God is able to apply... That work that was done thousands of years earlier and apply it to them by putting them in Christ. Because that's where the salvation is. It's in Him. That's why it's the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Are you with me? In other words, that's where the salvation is found. It's found in Christ. So what God does to make you a beneficiary of it, anyone that exercises faith in that cross work of the Lord Jesus is now put into Christ. And, as a, and when they're put into Christ, then they have the redemption that is in Christ. Does that make sense to you? Now you might be asking yourself, so why, why is that such a big deal? Well, here's part of the reason for that. Because here's the way we think of it. Now I need to change my illustration a little bit because this is actually going to be the wrong way to think about this. Uh, okay. And here's what we think of. We think of the gospel being... Asking Jesus to come into your heart. Isn't that the way you've heard that over and over? I understand what's being said, and in my lifetime I have said that plenty of times. But to really understand the truth of what's happening when you get saved, the invitation, you are not extending to God an invitation. We're going to cover this in a moment. Folks, he's extending an invitation to us. Not the other way around. We're not <coughs> inviting Jesus into our heart. God is inviting us into Christ. I know that may sound like semantics and I'm making a big deal over nothing. But look. God is God or Jesus isn't sitting out here waiting for you to give them an invitation. They have already done what needs to be done. Now, when you hear the message, you either respond positively to that message or negatively to that message. It's not about you really inviting God to 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 go anywhere. And 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 so Paul 
is actually introducing the concept of being in Christ. He's actually now introducing that concept. No, he's not giving us a bunch of detail about it because it's the first time you're hearing anything about it. So what you might expect it to say, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is by Christ Jesus, now you find out it's in Christ Jesus. And this is the first time you get an inkling that now something is happening about you being in Christ. And he is going to enlarge on that in the in the in the uh the chapters to come